I'm Roger Boosby from Skill Builder and I'm back in my shed with another product test. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Yep, it's the 18 volt drill test, the one that we did a couple of years ago, but new and improved. This time, because we got comment, we got a bit of flack on that last one, we got a lot of likes as well, but some people said that's a bit unfair what you did there, putting this particular model up against that model. The reason we did it was because we wanted to make things as fair as we could, but we realized that you can't actually get exact same drills. They've all got their little quirks, they've all got their features, some of them are larger than others, some of them cost more than others, and that's an important point. So we will be covering that, we'll be putting the average street price up if you like, to give you an idea of whether you're paying an awful lot more for some drills than others. I think I've rambled enough, let's get on with it, let's get out there and get testing. I've been using the Panasonic and it's got a motor cutout device on it. It's got some electronics in there which stop it from overheating. And it'll only do about five holes with that flat bit before it gives up, it stops. And the only way I can get it going again, the red light comes on, the only way I can really get it going again is to take the battery off and then reset the battery and, and kick it up again. But actually that's cheating the system. What I should do is let it cool down a bit, but it's taking significantly longer to drill those holes than the others. I mean, it, that motor protection may be a great thing. It's protecting the battery, protecting the motor, but if you're trying to wang one hole in after another, then it really is struggling to do that job. You can take a view on that. You can say, well, I never worked that fast anyway, and it's looking after my drill, long-term investment and all that. So you may prefer that. I don't know, I'm just saying what happened. Okay, so that's the flat bit over and done with. I've run all those through the chipboard and seen how they've gone. And I learned an awful lot from it actually. And I'm just beginning to think this may turn out to be the longest tool test that I've ever done because I've got a lot of machines here and I've found out quite a bit and quite a bit that surprised me. So starting with the Milwaukee, which is the first one I put through there, that went through without any trouble on second speed. It didn't cough, it didn't splutter, it just went straight through, did the job, didn't overheat, didn't show any 
particular signs of any worry at all. They reckon this has got 130 newton meters on it, so it should do the job. But flat bits are a bit of a funny animal. Flat bits actually like to be run fast. They're not designed to be run on low speed, on low torque. Even though there's quite a lot of torque uh, requirement on these, um, what actually happens is that you spin them fast and they cut through. If you put them on a slow speed and try a high torque, you'll find that it just twists, spirals that shaft. And I've even seen them go like corkscrews because of the difference between the torque there and the resistance there, and the fact that you're trying to shove it through a very thin shaft. Obviously the lower quality ones are more susceptible to that than the higher quality ones, but all in all, as I say, the way they're designed to work is top speed and hit it running and you should be all right. So then we got the Makita. Now the Makita also did the job without any trouble at all. Put it on top speed, away it went, didn't cough, didn't splutter. Again, I'm thinking that these two are very, very close. You can see that the Milwaukee is just a, light, a slight bit shorter than the Makita. They've managed to put it, make it a little bit more compact a little bit lighter if you like. So it'll be interesting to see how those two go against each other. Then we had the DeWalt. Now the DeWalt is a three-speed gearbox. This is something that Makita abandoned some years ago because of reliability issues, but DeWalt seemed to have got it sorted out and they're not having problems with this three-speed box and they reckon that that gives you a lot more versatility in the drill. Now, I tried it on the third speed, which is the way you would go, top speed, shove the drill bit through, uh, shove the flat bit through, and what I found is it didn't like it. Protested almost straight away the electronic motor protection in this thing, and maybe it was even the battery as well, overcurrent, but whatever it was, it cut out, didn't like it, and I had to select the middle gear, the second gear, if you like, and when I did that, it was fine. It went through without any trouble at all after that. And uh, it was just a bit slower because it wasn't working on its absolute maximum speed. It went through a little bit slower, but I think we got a nice balance between that low torque and that high speed there. I think maybe that having that middle gear was quite good. And in a way, what it's doing for you is it's telling you which gear to select. I mean, if it protests in one, you just lower the gear. So in a way, that's an idiot proof drill. And, uh, Top marks to them for that, I guess. The Bosch. What do we know about the Bosch? The Bosch has got the cool pack battery, so saves it overheating. They've given us a four amp hour battery rather than a five amp hour battery. Everyone else is running five amp hour batteries, but Bosch said, no, we do make a five amp hour battery, but we're gonna give you this four amp hour battery because that's the way they sell this drill with the four amp hour batteries. You can buy a naked body, you can go and buy five amp hour batteries, but if you buy it in a kit, it comes with the four amp hour batteries. But because they've got this cool pack technology, which basically keeps all the cells apart, and has heat absorption in the bottom and blows air through the battery itself, they reckon that because of that, the cool pack will give you maybe 30% more runtime than a conventional battery. So that'll be interesting. Does the four amp hour battery actually equate to a five amp hour battery on other models? We'll find out. We'll find out whether this lasts the course or whether it peters out. If you're a betting man, have a little gamble on that. So then we come to the Panasonic. Now Panasonic's very interesting. They are primarily an electronics company, as we all know, and they love to put their electronics in. They've got this electronic speed control here, which is more or less like a cruise control. And so I put that on the top speed here. It's got high, medium, and low. So I put it on the top speed, high on here. I put it on the top speed on the gearbox, and away I went almost immediately it stopped working. Didn't want to know. Did not like doing that job. That 25 millimeter flat bit on high speed, full wang, just too much for it. So I experimented. I thought, okay, what should I do? I'll leave it on high speed on the gearbox and I'll lower it on the uh, electronic speed control here. So I went down to medium on the electronic speed control and I tried to do it that way. It was better, but it still didn't like it. Still after two or three holes, it said, hang on a minute, 
I'm not happy with this. So I tried it on the low setting. Now on the low setting, you're starting to run up against the thing of, is this the best way of running it? You know, should we be going on to the low speed on the gearbox? But as I say, these bits aren't designed for that kind of torque. So it never really settled down. It never really found a happy medium. And because of that, what you might call overzealous protection of the motor and the gearbox, I don't know, I mean, sorry, not the gearbox, the battery, that overzealous protection, it didn't really do the job. I mean, it, it got through, all right, but you had to do maybe five holes, give it a rest, and then away you went again to do a bit more. So interesting because obviously it's protecting that motor and it's protecting that battery and it may mean that that means that tool lasts a lot longer than other tools. But if you're one of those guys who just wants to keep wanging holes through something, that struggle. It may be that you've got to use a different kind of hole saw on it, maybe a self-feeding auger bit's better. We will be testing those soon, so we'll see how it goes. But surprise me that, because I love Panasonic, they're great tools, I've got a lot of respect for them, but in terms of sheer grunt, it just wasn't there. Talking about sheer grunt, this is a chunky old fella. Now, Hitachi have got a new tool coming out, which they couldn't quite get to us in time for this test. They said it wasn't released at that point, but they do promise to lend us one in the future so even after this test is finished we put up that new one and we give it the identical test to these ones so we can see how it went what we won't do of course is see how much more it got than these ones but maybe we will i don't know we, we'll work it out but interestingly what hitachi have done here is they've given us a brushed motor even though they knew we were putting this up against brushless motors they were quite happy to give us this one. As I say, they got the new machine coming in, but they said, okay, try this one because brushed motor is cheaper. And certainly in terms of going through the chipboard, put it on high speed, away I went, it was pretty good. There were one or two times when I just had to ease off on it because it felt like it was gonna stall a bit, but it, it did the job. And I wouldn't complain about that at all as a drill thing, it was pretty impressive. Now we come to Festool. Now Festool, very eclectic, upper range, they're not cheap. People that love them, love them. We got so many comments from people on our last 18 volt test saying, why didn't you put Festool in? Festool would have beaten all those tools. People have got tremendous brand loyalty based upon I don't know what really, but there you are. People that love Festool, love Festool. And you know, oh, Festool's a great brand. I mean, there's nothing wrong at all with it. This has got, a four-speed gearbox. Everything's electronic. Electronic torque control, a four-speed gearbox there, and even a little selector between percussion and rotary there. So I put it on the fourth speed because I thought, well, that's the way to go. Let's put it on the high speed and do what we did with everything else. It didn't like it at all. It just stopped. It stalled. It did its little cutout that it did. I said, I'm not having that. So then I put it down to third and I thought, okay, let's give it a go on third, see how we go with third. And it didn't like third. It just, you know, it, it did a few more holes than it did on fourth, but it still stalled on me. It still didn't want to know. So I then had to go to second speed. So on the second speed, I got this balance between the speed and the torque, but it starts to get a little bit talky for these bits. It didn't twist it round. It didn't do any damage to it. So we've got to reckon it's all right but it wasn't fast and it's a little bit refined. I think in terms of doing this kind of job, I'm not sure that it's uh, ideal for it. It's got a lot of protection in there. It's got a lot of sophisticated controls and it's great for a cabinet maker, a kitchen fitter. It may not be such a good tool for your rough and ready builder who just wants to wang holes through things and get the job done. I don't know. I mean, I'm just putting a view forward there. Please, you know, if you like Festool, don't take it personally. I'm not having a go at any particular brand. I'm not even trying to tell you which brand to buy. All I'm trying to do is put my findings before you more or less as a point of debate. So certainly, you know, make your comments, tell me what you think, but that didn't perform so well on that task. But we've got plenty more tasks coming up. So let's see how it goes 
and what it does. It certainly didn't do any harm to it, so all that protection it's got in there for the, for the motor and the battery seems to be working. Now Metabo, had a bit of a funny time with Metabo on our first 18 volt test, but this one, happy to say, brushless motor and away it went, did the job and I put it on second speed and then it's got a speed control down here as well and it didn't excel in terms of on top speed, it protested a little bit you know, but I just kept it going and kept the pressure off it, didn't give it too much to do at once and by lowering the speed down there I found that I'd, I'd reached a happy medium with it. So nice compact little drill there and it did do the job. It's funny it's got this electronic speed control down here because what it has is a tiny gap at the front there. I don't know what's inside there whether there's any dust issues or anything like that but you've got this knob here and I think if you were drilling through masonry and it started to clog up there, you could find that that switch became, or that dial became a bit of a problem. I don't know, I mean, I could be wrong. Who knows? And also, the other thing this has got on it is pulsing. It does a bit of pulsing. And that is a thing that Metabo have got that they've had on their tools for some time. And it allows you to just put it on and that gives you almost like an impact driver and it's really made for taking out obstinate screws. If you've got rusted screws, you've got something that's stuck in, maybe you're changing a door and the old screws are a bit tight in there and you can just shock them out bit by bit. Just It's a sort of stop start. You shouldn't use it too long and you shouldn't use it for driving, doing screws up, but it does have that ability to do that. And so we'll see how that goes. We'll give that little uh, feature a test in, in time, but uh, and, you know, good drill, did the job, no complaints. So let's get on to the next bit. The next bit we're gonna do is the torque drive through with the self-feeding auger bit. We've got a 32 mil bit here. We will go higher. We will try and eliminate them and see which ones survive, if you like, on the high torque setting. And I've got my suspicions of which ones I think will be better, even based on what I was just doing there. But for this test, we put it on speed one. We, we put it on the lowest gear we can find in every single instance, and then we just see how it goes and which one survives. <laughs> 